different studio. Pick up your brush today. Welcome to the Ink Different Studio. This is Fiona. I would like to also welcome you to our Chinese calligraphy course, a captivating journey into one of the most ancient and respected forms of artistic expression. Chinese calligraphy is not just an art. It is profound cultural heritage, recognized globally for its artistic and historical value. This course will offer you an opportunity to delve into the elegance and depth of Chinese calligraphy, exploring its unique blend of written language and visual art. But this is not all. Chinese calligraphy is renowned for its therapeutic benefits, enhancing calmness, reducing stress, and improving mindfulness through the rhythmic motion in brush movements. These benefits make it not only a cultural exploration, but also a practice in mindfulness and personal tranquility. Our course will feature the classic Chinese text, the Thousand Character Classic, Qian Zi Wen. This text is not only a cornerstone for Chinese calligraphy training, but also a rich source of history and philosophy, making it perfect for both beginners and seasoned enthusiasts. The Qian Zi Wen, translated as the Thousand Character Classic, is a unique Chinese poem used as a premier for teaching Chinese characters to children. It is renowned for its ingenious composition, wherein none of its 1,000 characters are repeated, Composed by Zhou Xingsi during the Southern and Northern Dynasty around the 6th century, the text is not just a linguistic tool, but also a collection of moral and philosophical teachings. The Thousand Character Classic has been used traditionally in Confucian teaching, providing a fundamental literacy resource that also encapsulates essential elements of Chinese culture and wisdom. Each line consists of four characters, with the lines grouped into sections for easier memorization. The content covers a wide range of topics, from the basics of the cosmos and the natural world to the principles of human conduct as the fundamental of statecraft. This text not only helps in learning Chinese characters, but also in appreciating the depth and breadth of Chinese literary tradition and cultural values. It has been an important educational text in China and other Eastern Asian countries, influenced by classical Chinese culture. Join us as we trace the strokes of history and artistry in our journey. Whether you're looking to broaden your artistic skills or immerse yourself in cultural heritage, this course promises to be both educational and enriching. Also, do not forget to follow this channel for our regular course updates. To create a comfortable and relaxing environment for our course, start by ensuring the room is quiet, with good lighting, a stable table, and comfortable chairs. Change into comfortable clothing and lay out the equipment, which I will introduce you shortly. The brush requirements can vary depending on the script for both seal and clerical scripts. The best brushes are those with soft bristles that hold a gorgeous amount of ink, making gold hair brushes an ideal choice. However, for regular script, the same type of brushes used for seal and clerical scripts may be challenging for beginners because they are too soft. Writing certain strokes that require bursts of strength will demand significant practice. For regular script, we need a brush with a stronger core where, while still capable of holding a good amount of ink. Therefore, for regular practice, a mixed hair brush featuring weasel hair at the core and gold hair around it will be preferable. For writing very small characters, pure weasel hair brushes are the best option. As for running and cursive scripts, a brush with a relatively long head is ideal. This allows the brush head to move freely on the paper, enabling smooth, flowing lines. A mixed hairbrush can still be an easier option for beginners. If you are a complete beginner and don't wish to invest too much in brushes, 
I recommend this well-balanced, price-friendly brush set available in my shop, which can satisfy most of your needs, especially seal, clerical, and regular scripts. If you specifically prefer practicing running and cursive scripts, this other brush set will also work nicely. You can simply scan the QR codes on the screen. However, if you have specific preferences, feel free to contact me directly for personalized recommendations. I'll be happy to help. That said, I sincerely need to emphasize the importance of brush quality. I wholeheartedly recommend investing in good quality brushes, as the selection of brush hair, material, and the treatment of the brush handles are critical factors that can make a significant difference in the brush's performance and ease of use. Using poor quality brushes from the beginning may lead to the development of bad habits, which could hinder your progress later on. For calligraphy practice, brushes are your most essential tools, even more important than the papers you will use. On the screen, you will see a list of the necessary supplies. Please make sure to prepare them accordingly so we can begin our calligraphy journey. Also, feel free to scan the QR code to visit my site where you will find a thoughtfully curated section of art supplies, books, and other valuable resources. Explore everything you need to enhance your artistic journey. Today, we're going to continue with the learning and the writing of the Thousand Character Classic. What are the new characters of today? Let's go find out. In Seal Script, the character Tui is composed of two parts. The left side represents a hand symbolizing exerting force, while the other side is Dre, which is an abbreviation of Dre, meaning a sharp tool. The original meaning of this character is to push forward with a pointed tool. In Oracle Bone Script and Western Zhou Bronze Inscriptions, the character for Wei and Li had the same form. The upper part of the character depicts a person standing upright, and beneath the figure is a horizontal line which represents a place where the person stands, indicating a position or location. Later, the character Wei was differentiated by adding the Ren person radical to Li. The original meaning of Wei is generally understood as the place where a person stands, especially referring to the rank or position of ministers in the court. It also extends to mean the place or position that a person or other entity occupies. From the ranks of ministers, it further extended to signify rank, nobility, office, job title, and social status. In Warring States period, pottery inscriptions, the left part of this character Zhang is the character Yan, speech, which serves as the semantic component, while the red part is Xiang, which is the phonetic component. The original meaning of Zhang was to reproach or blame indicating criticism or blame, which is conveyed through speech, hence the inclusion of yan, speech. Later, the meaning of zhang evolved from reproaching others to restraining oneself, incorporating the idea of humility and yielding. The character zhang became closely linked with the Confucian concept of li, propriety or etiquette, leading to the expression li rang, which emphasizes respectful yielding in social behavior. In modern Chinese, the meaning related to humility and yielding has been preserved, while the original meaning of blame has disappeared. The earliest form of the character guo was huo, which was also the ancient character for territory. In Oracle Bong script, huo was written with wei on the lower left, emphasizing a city or fortress, and ge on the upper right, representing a weapon, indicating military power. The original meaning of the character was a territory defended by force. In bronze script, the four sides of wei were marked with lines, which were symbols used to emphasize the borders. These four lines were later simplified into a straight line. By the late Zhou dynasty, Huo has been borrowed to represent meanings such as possibility or doubt. To indicate a territorial region, a Wei was added around the character to represent a domain or region. In summary, 
Tui means to push or to yield, and Wei refers to a position, particularly one of authority or leadership. In ancient times, this phrase implied voluntarily stepping down from one's role, especially as a ruler or leader. It reflects the Confucian ideal that a good leader should be willing to give up power for the greater good or in favor of someone more qualified. Zhang means to allow or to yield, and Guo refers to territory or state. This phrase signifies the act of giving up rule over the country to another person. It conveys the notion that a ruler should be willing to step aside and let a more virtuous or capable individual govern. In the Thousand Character Classic, Tui Wei Rang Guo refers to the ancient practice where rulers, recognizing their limitations or virtues of others, would willingly abdicate the throne. This practice was highly regarded in Confucian thought, as it demonstrates the value of humility, benevolence, and selflessness. Such actions were seen as ideal behaviors for rulers who prioritized the welfare of other people over their own power. A classic example is Yao and Shun, two legendary sage kings in ancient China. Emperor Yao, recognizing Shun's wisdom and virtue, chose to pass the throne to Shun rather than keep it within his own family. The act of Rang Guo, yielding the kingdom, became a symbol of the ideal transfer of power, where personal ambitions are set aside for the good of the people. In Confucian philosophy, rulers were expected to embody moral virtues and act in the best interest of their people. Tui Wei Rang Guo encapsulates the Confucian ideal of Ren, benevolence, and Yi, righteousness, where the focus is on maintaining harmony and ensuring the prosperity of the state, even if that means stepping down from power. Now, let's explore how these characters are written in the three scripts. I'll start by practicing with you on the water writing cloth, and then I'll demonstrate using ink and raw rice paper.
As we wrap up our session, I hope you found it enjoyable and insightful. If you have any questions, comments, or simply want to share your thoughts, don't hesitate to leave me a message. If you find this session informative, please remember to give me a thumbs up. Also, be sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on our future sessions. Discover, learn, and create with us as we bring the best of Chinese culture to the world. Join us at Ink Different Studio, where art meets heritage. Thank you so much for joining us, and until next time. For more information, check us out at inkdifferentstudio.com.